606 of the Unbiased Truth Podcast with a very special guest, Brian Dorsett. Uh, this spot, this episode is sponsored by 360 Home Inspections and C3 Heating and Air. And this is a special after hours editions of the Unbiased Truth Podcast. You may be asking yourself, what is different between this one and the uh, after hours and the uh, regular one? Well, we get to drink in this one. Um, at, it was Brian's idea, so I thought it was a good idea. So here we are uh, with an after hours. So uh, we'll try to stay on track, but it's not always a guarantee as it's taken us 20 minutes just to get started uh, recording with the podcast. So um, with that being said, man, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Glad to be here. So, um, just for anybody who's listening and not watching on the uh, on the YouTube, uh, we're drinking um, basil, right? Mm-hmm. Basil, basil Aiden and rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. Um, for those that are that are listening and can't see, because um, you know the visual effects make for good radio, so so to speak. So, and then there's Courtney drinking Dr Pepper yep, in the background as she's. <laughs> we're not allowed to, but she can. It's fine. That's right. That's right. We get we get yelled at for making noises, <laughs> but it's okay when she does it. Um, obviously. That's right. So, first thing I want to talk about, man, is just your background. Like, how did you, you own C3 Heating and Air. Dude. Um, how did that come about? Because when you came here before, um, when Courtney was Ricky, um, <laughs> that, that uh, you had a pretty, pretty interesting trip to mm-hmm. becoming uh, yeah. the heating and air guy. I did. So, I actually started out in corporate America. Um, went to Virginia Tech for business. Spent a lot of time out in corporate America doing inbound and outbound marketing, working with Fortune 100 companies, Um, living the office life. Um, My last job, I managed five 460 seat call centers um, prior to moving into more of the trade style uh, application. And then uh, looking for a change. Uh, I was living still up in the the Blacksburg area. came down to Richmond. My family was still here. My best friend was here um, and got a job as the vice president of operations for uh, Dominion um, Management, which did building automation controls and commercial HVAC. Mm -hmm. So uh, first time I had really dealt with outside of just general facilities maintenance, um, any kind of real trade. Decided I want to get my feet wet. Oh, I'm not close enough. <laughs> so I don't want to get my, yeah, learn what was going on. Um, and so I jumped into it with both feet. Um, uh, was spending a lot of time out with the guys, not your typical, uh, wearing the suit in the office kind of guy, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, boots on the ground, learning what they were doing, trying to figure out why stuff was taking so long. If it was, um, what the true background was and loved it. I uh, love the challenge of it, love the immediate gratification of one, fixing something and the troubleshooting right. side of it. Um, but two, just the overall dynamic of how it worked, how much goes into it, something a lot of people don't really understand how much goes into heat and air and uh, just kind of fell in love. Uh, so spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, opportunity came about. Um, I am not the originator, I guess, of C3 mm-hmm. heating and air. Um, it was started by um, a different gentleman who was a pastor uh, he was doing it as a part-time gig, kind of help pay the bills, because I guess pastor life doesn't pay all the bills. I don't know. Not a pastor. Thank goodness. That'd be a horrible one. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd come listen to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it'd be good stories. <laughs> right. um, you know, but that'd be about it. But, um, you know, so he was looking to get out. It just grown too big for him. Right. Uh, he couldn't handle it anymore. It was taking too much of his time, and it was beyond a part-time gig. So um, bought C3 Heating and Air. Um, you know, I got my master's license, class A contractor's license, everything that goes along with that. Yep. Um, and of course, C3 heating and air it was predominantly residential. Mm-hmm. So once again, boots on the ground, you know, it's not a lot different than commercial other than yeah. it's crawl spaces and attics rather than mechanical rooms. So yeah. being six foot eight, that's, that's fun. That's, that's nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I love that. <laughs> uh, it's great on the knees and the head. Um, <laughs> Whatever, but uh, <laughs> drop your IQ a little bit every yeah, time you hit your head. Just a little bit. It's <laughs> fine. I got something to spare. It's <laughs> super smart. Um, yeah. That's what they all say. Yeah. That's my wife. She'll tell you all about it, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, so, yeah. And, you know, we've continued to grow over a year. I've owned it for, I guess, six years now, roughly. So, um, it was definitely an odd transition. Um Never thought I would do this. I came from a family of blue collar workers as far as yeah. grandfather and beyond. I will say that, you know, he did construction and that type of thing. Um, 
Dad, not so much. He went into the white collar life, but um, definitely a different direction that I didn't expect to go. But uh, right. love it. You know? Yeah, you know, I mean, I I understand uh, the student time office thing. You know, yeah. as much as I think I want to be in an office, you know, I, I joined the Navy and I was on the flight deck. Yeah, and and so no inside there, and and we were off the the coast of Africa and 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 um. Persian Gulf and all those hot places, you oh, know, yeah. 110, 120 degrees. That's not right. Uh, when the ship was moving, it just made it worse yeah. because it's just a furnace blowing in your face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's what I wanted to do. And then go from there to the fire department, you know, yeah. and, and all the all the elements. And then from the fire department to to here, you know, where crawl spaces and, and, and all that stuff. Oh, and, I know. You feel the pain. Yeah, and along the way, there's different stops, you know, training division, you yeah. know, safety officer, things like that. That's in the office. You're like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. And after like a week, you're like, this ain't okay anymore. No. You know, so, yeah. um, um, <clears throat> you know, as, as much as I, as, as it, it's not going to be fun come July and August, you know, uh, I'm sweating, uh, but there's just, I just can't be in office for more than, than, you know, so long. So, yeah. Yeah, there, there's something to be said for it, um, but no, that's that's a fascinating um, story. On <laughs> I guess <laughs> yeah. I killed a man, and then no, no. that's right. Yeah, watched the man die in Reno. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Transition right to eating an air from there. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> um, so taking over a business, uh, how did that look? Was was it was Messy it just him as? everything yeah was it, it was, so it was just him so you got employees now i do i do um he had he had just hired a couple employees um so he that's what i think created the stress overload for him because as we all know as being a business owner it is you know you are teacher psychiatrist hr yeah accountant admin everything right so my my grandfather was a methodist preacher Sure. And and in West Virginia, always small churches. All right, um, but he worked as an electrician in the coal mines okay. full time. So, because yeah. being a Methodist preacher of small churches, right, don't pay the bills, right? That's it. not yeah. a full time job. So, it. with that being said, he would spend. Um, he worked mostly nights, mm-hmm. um, as far as I do, you know, yeah. from from the time I, I I can remember. So he would spend all night Saturday night preparing for a sermon. Yeah. You know, so I would say that just to say that. When you start growing a business, when yeah. you're in that growth phase, oh, yeah. it's impossible to have multiple businesses, yeah. right. you know, preacher or not, yeah. right? Well, that's what um, it going is. on. It is yeah, business. I mean, yeah. Is. So, um, so I could imagine home. when when you're trying now, you know, it's time to hire somebody, yeah. and now it's like, well, I, this 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 isn't. Yeah, and he yeah. had a he had a real hard time letting go, which I think we all do to a certain extent, because at the end of the day, no matter what the name is, C three three sixty inspections your baby it's your yeah. name right right yeah. you, like you take it personal like somebody right. writes a negative review or calls with a complaint right. like it's you it doesn't matter what xyz employee yeah. did it's you yeah. like you know it, it's you so and i think he had a real hard time letting that go and you know it, I, I get it i do um you know luckily i guess from my side coming from corporate America. And, you know, at one point I had, <laughs> you're okay with everybody. Being 20, 300 you? direct reports. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> I was used to walking in and going, yeah, what am I getting yelled at today? For? So, I know, got I mean, eight bosses. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, that wasn't a big deal to me as far as, you know, I, I hate letting go to a certain extent. I, I don't feel like anybody's ever going to do it as good as I do. And that's probably a conceited pride, horrible thing to say on air. Sorry, but well, it's true. It's true. You you know, know, yeah. You, yeah. You know, I've, I've had this conversation with other business owners, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, before when I was just by myself, you know, and it's, and it's the fear of hiring somebody because right. it doesn't matter how you train them. You know, I hired Gordon and, and Gordon tra- I, I trained Gordon, sure. right. For the most yeah. part. Um, but when I bought MPI, uh, I brought on three guys that yeah. wasn't trained by me. Right. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, they're not, doesn't matter yeah. whether I train them or not. They're not going to do it the right. way I did it, yeah. you know, and, and it's hard. Yeah. It's oh, hard. It's ridiculously yeah. hard. Yeah. yeah. Cause especially when you get that phone call, right? Yeah. Like, Hey, you know, this wasn't in the report and you're like, man, yeah. I, I, I would have caught that. Yeah. You know, I would have fixed that. Or I would have yeah. been able to figure that out. Whatever it is, you know? So. How'd you miss that? You know, right, right. Whatever yeah. it is. But did you really crawl all the way to the back? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah body cams. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. But, yeah, I mean, and, I get, and you feel the pain. I mean, you did yeah. buy, you know, I'd, that's how we met. You know, I mean, I knew Aaron, obviously. And, um, 
you know, it's a it's an interesting ordeal when you walk into something where everybody's calling looking for somebody that isn't you, mm-hmm. even though you feel like you know just as much or more than that person. Right. Doesn't matter, right. you know, but you haven't built that trust relationship yeah. yet. And, you know, and that was me as I took the first year really – I ran so many calls that I shouldn't have run right. just because I wanted to be the, the face that they saw and the person mm-hmm. they talked to and the, you know what, this guy isn't some random serial killer from wherever, you know, like, <laughs> I can trust him in my house. Like, even you know, if he thinks the earth's flat. Right, even if he thinks the earth's flat. <laughs> oh, Lord, don't get me on that. But um, I got a guy that really does. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, off-topic so, conversation. So I've heard. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, couldn't have happened to anybody better than your friend who we're at doing the house for. Um, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Public education is not what it used to be. But anyway, that's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, and it's it was tough. Um, you know, I, I know that, and I expected it. You know, I came into this knowing that I was going to lose twenty five percent of the business out the gate right. because I wasn't who used to be there. Right. It's just the nature of the beast. Right. Um, you've got to try to earn that business back. And, you know, I, I think we did a good job. We've grown every year. We had one year that was tough, um, you know, right the year after, actually. Not the year we actually transitioned, but the year after that. It was like the toughest year for me. We didn't grow at all. I didn't understand right. it. Right. felt like we were killing it. We were, you know, doing everything right. We were right. pushing hard. But for whatever reason, we just didn't grow. And it happens. I right. mean, you know, as a – Small business owner, you have those plateaus, but it wasn't something I wasn't used to. I, I wasn't right. used to just winning. Right. You know, That's like, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow. Like, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> if you ain't uh, first, you're last. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> you file the end of the year, and you're like, wait a minute, what the heck just happened? Yeah. You know, like, that, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but... That's fine, but, you know, and other than that, we've grown every year. We've done the right thing. Um, you know, I feel like it's great. The hardest piece for me was... I do have a relationship with a past Mm -hmm. business owner. Um, He is still involved. So he actually got a different gig working for one of our vendors as a trainer. Um, Nice. Yeah. So I still talk to him routinely. I talked to him routinely before. Um, You know, I I asked that he stay on for six to eight months when I came on board just to kind of transition things, show me how he was doing things so that I wasn't coming in day one and changing everything. You know, I mean, like, Nothing worse you can do than come in and reinvent the yeah. wheel day one. A lot of people do that, man. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you saw it, especially in corporate America. I did. Um, you know, uh, here's my chance. You yep. know, here's here's my stamp. I got to yeah. put my stamp on and it. And I've made that mistake. I mean, yeah, absolutely. point blank. Absolutely. Yeah, well, you I've know, owning a business is 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 a lesson in mistakes, yeah. right? I mean, oh. that's the, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, experience is the best teacher, mm-hmm. as they say. And uh, uh, it, it's really hard to to come in and, and just like, you know what, let me – let me see how it plays out, yeah. you know, but so many people come in and all of a sudden it's just, you know, complete turnaround of yeah. how we were doing things when how we were doing things was okay. You know, when I was yeah. in the Navy, we had, we had, you know, officers do different rotations. So sure. we had a, a, as a pilot, one of the, one of the rotations was the aircraft handling officer, which is in charge of the flight deck and making the moves and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and he was very adamant. I was on an amphib, so we had very small space. It was an aircraft carrier. Mm-hmm. Um, we had helicopters and air okay. jets. Yeah. Um, now Ospreys and, yeah. and whatnot. But um, he says he wanted a a a, a aircraft moved a, and parked a very specific way. It was the, the 53s, which are huge. So it's like the world's largest uh, uh, transport helicopter. Right? Okay. And he had like 80 years of experience of guys that only work on a flight deck their entire career telling yeah. him like, hey, man, you can't, you can't do that. It's going to crunch <laughs> the yeah. aircraft. I don't care. Do it this way because the way you're doing it takes too long when you just need to shove it this way. And you're like, no, there's – okay, do your way. And first move, man, one bird into another. And all of a sudden the Marine, the Marine uh, ace, you know, they call it the ace, yeah. the, the, the wing of the, the aircraft attachment, uh, the commanding officer, he was not impressed, you know, I'm, like, I'm well, sure. how, $30 million <laughs> because mistake or most whatever of these it was. Air, like, yeah. Most of these aircraft, you can't get a piece of paper in between because it's so tight when you're parking oh, yeah, them. Bet, and he yeah. said, like, no, no, do it this way. This way's better. You've been here for three minutes, you know, and you're trying to change that. You got 80 years of experience telling you you can't do that. So it's very, very man it's so common when at the end of the day man just just come in you know when i took over oh i say took over when we merged with mbi yeah we took it over kind of. <laughs> well, yeah you know aaron's a quitter right <laughs> absolutely aaron if you're listening to this <laughs> shame on you um you know the goal was there, there was some big changes that was 
going to happen. Mm-hmm. Software being the one of them, right? But everything else, like let's see, let's see how it, you know, before we start making little changes, right. you know. So, but outside of the software, it was just kind of see how it plays out because well, I think, yeah, you have to learn that, right? So, and that's something that comes through trial and error and through mistakes and, like you said, I mean, past lives and everything else. You learn that is you know, anytime I hire a new guy, first thing out of my mouth is. You know, it's a always a sixty day introductory period. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing we always do, probationary, whatever you want to call it. Where we make sure we're a good fit. I mean, yeah, every employee is in a great fit for every business. Every business is a great fit for every employee, and it's not necessarily they're doing anything wrong. You're doing anything wrong, but if your goals don't meld, it doesn't make sense, right? Right? Because at the end of the day, they're the face of my business. Yeah, just like you, they're the ones who see the realtors, the customers, the whoever. It's not Brian every time. It's right. you know Tyler. It's Tuggy. It's Gary. It's whoever. Um, so you know we got to make sure that we have the same mindsets, the same goals, the same attitudes, whatever that might be. But beyond that, it's I always tell everybody: at sixty days, we're going to sit down. We're going to have a very real conversation, mm-hmm. and that very real conversation isn't necessarily a bee fest. I don't want right. to cuss. Right, right. <laughs> you know it's. It's very much of we got buttons for that, so okay. it's okay. cool. Yeah, <laughs> let Make your editor work today. <laughs> Don't encourage that. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> you have the wrong guy on today, baby. Um, <laughs> I encourage drinking. It's a bad sign for That's the right. podcast, but um, <laughs> everybody's got to unwind somehow. That's Don't right. Judge me. Um, but you know, it's at the sixty day mark. It sits down and talks to this guy. You know, I just hired a new employee. Perfect example, Gary. Great guy. 17 years experience, but at 60 days, I want to sit down and say, what are we doing that could be improved? Mm. Just us. Cause everybody doesn't know everything. If they think they right. do, they're full of it. You know, well, as the saying goes, right. if you're the smartest person in the, wrong, in the room, you're in the wrong room. Right. Yeah. But number two is I want to hear what his take is on things because number two, we might be doing a lot of things that he thinks might necessarily be wrong, but aren't, you know? Right. That he's just been, he's got 17 years of bad habits that That's you right. got to fix. That's you know right. what I mean? Like That's one right. of the two, but you know, I think it's very important to keep your ears to the ground and listen to that kind of stuff. Even customer feedback, you know, I mean, I've got one or two negative reviews on my account and I hated them. They happened. You know, right. I mean, there's nothing I can do to change that. I called the customer and tried to make it right after the fact, but I didn't ask them to change their review Yeah, because I think it's important that People see that very real piece of it. I make mistakes. Things right. happen. My employees make mistakes. Whatever it is, you know, it happens. But we go to fix it, you know. And But part of that is also the growth piece of it mm-hmm. is, you know, how much of that is the customer being a little upset for the wrong Absolutely. reason? Absolutely. Absolutely. how much of that is we screwed up? I've recently, I mean, you bring up reviews, and that's a great point. I've recently um, put out an email to, to us, you know, our yeah. group, because I've noticed – uh, another home inspector got a, he got blasted on a negative review. Right. And, and reading the review, like none of it was fair yeah. because it, it, it didn't show what we truly do. Like everything right. was, was just inaccurate. Sure. Um, and, and some of that comes down to a lack of understanding what we do. Right. right. Um, but I, I highlight that just to show like, Hey, you know, <clears throat> uh, deliver your expectations, deliver what a home inspection is or isn't. Cause right. nobody knows what we do. Right. You know, a lot of client, no client does. A lot no. of realtors don't, and no. there's, there's some home inspectors don't, don't know. Hard, right. Yeah. right, you know. So I work um, for some that I trust you. Yeah. I have no clue what they're so yeah. so it, it 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 sucks from that standpoint to yeah. get a bad review when it's not legit, right? right? You know, because there's a communication issue there that they don't understand what the expectations are. But when you're looking at reviews from a business standpoint, um, as a consumer. Now, when I look at reviews, I click on lowest rating. And yeah. it's not because of what I want to see as far as a client, but I want to see what the owner or the company responded right. to, right? Yep. Because there's a there's there's something to be said about how you respond to those yeah. reviews. You know, do you just, you know, blow them off? You right. know, do you call them names, you know? <laughs> or or are you like you said, you're trying to contact them, trying to make it right yeah. uh, and move on because if 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 you're just saying that I'm an idiot, I don't know what I'm doing um, as a client, then, you know, why do I want to work with that company? Yeah. So bad reviews aren't bad until you get the client, the owner or, or whoever, you know, yeah. Courtney, um, responding to those reviews and, and just making it worse. And I think know? it's tough because customers don't realize, like they, they truly don't realize the power of reviews as far as, you know, like 
I've got a bunch of four stars where people are like, they did everything great. That's a four star. Right. And you're like, right. you know, that's great. Like, I, I appreciate that you love me. You know, and it's, I'll use you for everything, whatever, four star. And you're like, well, that drops my Google rating right. to 4.3 instead right. of a five because yeah. you wrote it a four, you know. But, you know, the one stars, like you said, they're, they're tough because they're, you know, bad reviews in general. One star, two star, three star. I consider a three star a bad review. Right. Um, just because to me, I grew up in corporate America. Right. right? So a five is unachievable, even though it should be. Right. A four is you're doing everything right. <laughs> a three is you're meeting expectations. A two is we got work to do. And a one is why haven't we fired you yet? That's, you know, like. It's funny because you say that as corporate America. And corporate I think America. about evaluation. Yeah. Right? Like, like, why did I get like a five rating? Yeah. Well, well, nobody gets a five rating. Why do we nobody. have that as a rating? Yeah. You know, what, why is that even a, why is that Nobody. even a thing? Why it's is that even a thing? Yeah. Then what's the point? You know? <laughs> it's so and that's true. how yeah, I grew it's up. So true. Yeah, that's how I see ratings because that's how consumers are grown and bred, you yeah. know, and everything else yeah. is that's how they feel. And yeah. you know, a four is you did everything right. You just didn't yeah. blow my socks off or mow my grass yeah. while you're out here, whatever it was, you know. And that's fine. Like I yeah. get it. But you know, anything three and below, it's a hard look. You know, it is. And I take it personal. I do. Um, it's, it's hard not to. I inherited bad reviews, which is what's horrible. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, I'm sure you might have too. I don't know. I never looked at Aaron's reviews. I didn't care. I knew Aaron in person, so whatever. <laughs> I knew he was hard to get along with. It's fine. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> um, way better, Sid. Way better. Uh, I can only say that because Aaron doesn't give me any work anymore. But That's anyway, right. Um, Aaron. Yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, I even saw, saw him post some uh, about like a different HVAC company. I don't even know what, what that was about. Man, yeah. son of a gun. <laughs> I'm giving him a negative review tomorrow. That's MPI, right. you're screwed. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky left, now this, I'm out. I'm um, out. But yeah, oh, you know. thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it's funny because you do, you do take it personally because it is your baby. I mean, I don't think people get that you know they're used to the best buys and the verizons of the world where yeah even you know for my world it's the james river and the michael and sons you know right. the big boys that you know they just they don't have to care i guess to a certain extent you know? <laughs> well their marketing dollars is is yeah. is such, they're and their size for more than i make it a year right. you know i mean right. point blank gross you know i right. mean it is what it the is phone's I mean, going to ring yeah yeah i mean i I'm not going to name names. Just like McDonald's, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, in, in you see, you know, live in New Kent, yeah. and there's, you know, Facebook Facebook groups, New Kent and whatnot, and, and every day someone's blasting the McDonald's or Wendy's in there and whatnot, and, and, but yeah. you still go there, People right? Going, you know, it so, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that was me. I, I talked to a radio station. You know, I'm sure you get blown up the same way I do, where yep. it's, you know, we want you to advertise, we want you to do this, we want you to market. Everybody we want wants you. our money, man. Lord Everybody. Mercy. Nobody wants to give us money, but they uh, want our money. Uh, everybody <laughs> wants our money. I'm like, hey, man, I don't make enough to give you a lot, but, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, I was talking to a radio station. I'm like, what can I do to truly make an impact? Yeah. Like, I want all the spots. You know, yeah. I want to, every time you turn on the radio, I want C3 Heat in there. Mm-hmm. Another large heating and air company yeah. owns a lot of their spots. Yeah. yeah. And she flat out told me, you know, it's going to cost you $250,000, $300,000. Wow. And then we'll do it. And I was like, well, <laughs> I better will. Okay. I better will. So I guess I'm not going to advertise. Yeah. You know I mean? I mean, that's what it boils down to is that, you know, and I feel like a lot of small companies, not just me, but everybody, you know, I mean, we're not overly small. I mean, we've got eight employees, five trucks on the road. You know I mean? We're a decent sized company. We're not one of the big boys. Right. Um, I don't want to be one of the big boys. I mean, Perfectly well, plainly, and, and home inspections in the same is in the same category as yeah. far as size sure. of companies. You got your really big ones, yeah. right? And then you got your single person operators yeah. and like everybody in between from two to like 90 is yeah. like that mid size. Right? right. So yeah. And that's what you classify yourself as. And it is what it is, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's tough for all of us because we're all competing with that. You yeah. know, and it's, we're all competing with each other, and then we're competing with a big boy, and then we're competing <laughs> with a guy in a truck who doesn't give a <laughs> dang about what he does or what he looks like and no. just makes all heat and air come and he's like, like, crap. Yeah, he's you like, know? How, how are you in business? You yeah, know? like, I mean, you go behind him and you're like, well, I'm sorry to tell you that yeah. you paid for what you got. You yeah. know, I mean, how else do I word it? 
you know. But I used to appreciate those people because it's like because when people use us. It, it allows them to appreciate sure. us more, right? Yeah. But now it's like, why are you still in business? Yeah. You know, it now it's, now it's a bad frustrating. name in the industry. Because like, right? you, like yeah. you haven't gone away, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, I mean, not to get political or anything else, but <laughs> Lord have mercy. With the economy where it was, we saw, you know, and that's the thing. Everybody broke off and started their own business. Yeah. Everybody starts an inspection company, a heat and air company. So, it's a yeah. one-man show. They yeah. work out of their garage. They do absolute horrible work. But it doesn't matter. They're booked out for four weeks because everybody needs something. The oh, drink it. Yep. And then the economy crashes, which we see every, what, eight, ten years. Yeah. And it just happens. Yeah. 08 was the last big one. But it happens. Um, it's probably coming. Yeah. We all see it. I mean, everybody wants to deny it's happening and whatever else, but it's probably it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. And that's when all of a sudden all those guys go away. Yeah. And you're left yeah. with the – 50, 60 companies in the area that, you know, do the right thing, yeah. try to do it right. They, Yeah, they charge a little more, but it's about value, right? So right. I've had a mentor for a long time that told me flat out, when your price is below the value of the service you're offering, right. it's a sell every time. And that's what we yeah. try to do, you know? Well, and it leads me into to what I want to talk about next, which is – you know, we price ourselves for where we are for a reason. I think we can we can bump our prices yeah. for because of five seventy a gallon for a few diesel fuel. Right? We're gonna have to um, <laughs> for 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 a couple reasons. Um, one is that we I would rather take less money to get somebody who's penny pension because they're trying to buy their first house a quality inspection versus. By finding that someone that can do an inspection for two hundred dollars, right, uh, and they're not getting a good inspection, right. So it's that balancing act of trying to service people who, who for me, right, because yeah. is is trying to get into that first time home buyers and and you know if you get a company that doesn't know what they're doing because you pay two hundred bucks, that two that 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 hundred and fifty dollars you saved or two hundred dollars you saved turns into $20,000 in repairs that you don't have, right? Yeah. But with that being said, one of the things that absolutely, I guess, irritates me or rubs me the wrong way is when you see somebody on Facebook, Twitter face, Insta face, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> uh, right? Um, I'm looking for an HVAC guy reasonably priced. Yeah. And it's like, what's like reasonable? I don't, I, right, it's what's relevant. reasonable? What's And it's like, do you, and sometimes these are people that are in business for themselves. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 100%. You know, and it's like, go back to, you get what you pay for, right? So, not to interrupt you, I have played both sides of that coin right. in the last six years. Um, I started out, and my goal was quantity, not quality. Right. Right, and I'll be the first to admit it. I was like, I will do an install for whatever it takes to book every single job or a service call, or whatever it is. doesn't matter the realtor, the flipper, the house person, whatever. <laughs> well, when you're starting off, you kind of got to do that, right? But we weren't starting, right, because I well, bought the business. So it's slightly different. But I had that mentality of, I don't want to lose a customer. Right. I want to grow this thing. The only way to grow is to be cheap and do whatever. Right. And what I found is we had a ton of work. We made hardly any money. I couldn't afford to send the guys to trainings. Right. I couldn't... Buy the best equipment out there. Yeah. I got to tell Courtney, you know, hey, you either got to work or or not take off. Yeah. You can't do both. Right. right? You know, like, get you paid know, yeah. or, I mean, or not, was, not take vacation. There was no vacation time. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have insurance. You know, like I, I pay my guys insurance now. You right. know, like I do these things and, you know, I require training. I do different certain things now, but I played that game. And what I found is that, you know, you get a ton of customers mm -hmm. and a lot of customers that, as a business owner, you don't want. <laughs> I mean, let's fact. be honest. Is that you get fact. a lot of customers that want the absolute best price in the world, the yeah. cheapest thing they could find. It doesn't matter what you're installing. <laughs> it better be the lowest number. Yeah. And they will call you every two days because There's a problem. this room doesn't feel right or that room yep. doesn't feel right. Or yep. Man, I was outside and that thing was noisy. Well, guess what? You paid the minimum number. You got the cheapest equipment we could get. It is noisy. I told you that out front. I didn't realize it was going to be this noisy. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I mean, but 
what we found is that we are not the most expensive. I don't want to paint it like we are. You know, I, I, I do think we should be as a business owner, right? Absolutely. We do everything right. We do the most we can do. We try to provide the most value we can to our customers. Yeah. There is no reason we shouldn't be able to charge top dollar. The realistic aspect of it is, is if you charge top dollar, you better be one of the big boys in the market. They can spend a million dollars in advertising yeah. because well, yeah. that's the only way you're going to get that money. Because at the end of the day, and, and I've seen people, they get three quotes, right? Yeah. And 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 three you want to be kind of right, and you want to yeah. be in the middle um, because the, the the thought process is I'm paying the top price for the trucks and the overhead and all right. the other stuff, and the bottom yeah. price is the bow tie. You mean the bow tie? <laughs> <laughs> that's the bow tie. <laughs> the bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah you know as the you know the, i think the industry term is competitively priced right sure, we're yeah. not the most expensive we're not the cheapest yeah uh, we're right we're there in the middle you know we're competitive but at the end of the day you know do i think we can charge yeah. more for what we offer absolutely yeah. you know um but again going back to reasonably priced and what people are looking for they don't understand yeah what goes into this right. you know I mean, they not, have no clue i mean yeah. Well, they look at it, and for me, and it's probably different for you, because Google, I hate it. I hate it. Because Walmart sells units now. Right. Now, I mean, let's be honest. They do. They come uncharged. They don't well, tell you like, that. They like, come uninstalled. Like the one, like they, the one he did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you yeah know. He, you know, he found a place oh, online yeah. that he could buy the unit for two two grand, and, yeah. and, and now it's just paying somebody to install it because the original company that came out said 20 grand for everything. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah, and then all of a sudden, he's like, wait that. a minute, how much is refrigerant? And I'm like, oh, yeah, by the way, right. you know, you got to pay this, you got to pay that, and Trapper, awesome dude. I hope you're listening. Dude, <laughs> I know I owe you a quote for your mom's house. I'm coming, I promise. Um, but number two, you know, I mean, Trapper is a great example, and that's who you're talking about and whatever. I'm naming names. I don't care. That's um, right. <laughs> Trapper's an awesome dude because you know, he did. He bought an equipment online, and he bought the second unit from me. Right. Because by the time he realized what it cost to go into installing equipment and whatnot, and he'll tell you. He took that thing up to the attic, and he was like, man, that sucked the worst I ever had. I'm, I'm just like, glad he didn't call me to help him. Me, yeah, me too. And I'm like, how many guys would take you? You know, did it fit? You know, <laughs> you know, but, I mean, that goes into it. Is he's like, man, there's a bear getting it up here, much less yeah. trying to do anything else yeah. to it. You know, and, yeah, and it's not, you're not just paying for the equipment. You're paying for the guys. You're paying mm -hmm. for the experience. You're paying for the you know, everything else that we do, the refrigeration and whatnot that comes with it. Um, but people don't understand that. You know, they look on Walmart.com, like I was saying, and they, they find a Goodman unit for two grand, and they're like, this is a steal. Look at YouTube, how to install yep. HVAC. How to install yep. it. And they bring it in, and they realize, oh, wait, I can't buy a refrigerant because yep. I don't have a CFC license. Yep. Even if I could buy a refrigerant, it's, wait, how much per? Wait, I got to buy a 30-gallon drum? How much yep. does that cost? Yeah. Um, you know, and then wait, now I got to buy gauges to put it in. I got to buy a vacuum pump. I got to buy, you know, all these different things that go along with installing a unit. None of that is free, you know, right. like, and that's what I tell people is you're not paying just for the equipment. You're paying for the experience, the tools, the, you know, the labor, right. the experience. And it's the same way with you guys. You could hire a $200 inspector who just got his license yesterday, <laughs> that's right. who goes out and, and trust me, I've worked for some of them and it's a nightmare. Yeah. They go out and they're like, yep. This and that and that. And then you go underneath the house and you're like, hey, man, did you see that huge beam that goes all the way across the house? Yeah, I saw that. Did you notice it was cracked in the middle? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't crawl that far back. I didn't crawl well, that far back. I mean, um, no. maybe you should have. Like, you know, I mean. And, and no, you're right. Like, I've, I've seen, like, we do much as, as I hate to do them, um, but it's just what the market dictates is these walkthroughs, right? Yeah, walk sure. and talks, walkthroughs, yeah. whatnot, where people are trying to put in offers, right? Mm -hmm. And and so it's not a full inspection, mm -hmm. right? We don't charge a full inspection price. There's not a report attached to it. Um, but, you know, we've, hey, I know somebody can do it for 100 bucks. Cool, sure. call them. Yeah. You know, call them because, you know, as gas is priced at, at 450 a gallon plus what we're bringing to the table, yeah. um, it's not worth us leaving the house for a hundred dollars, you know, as a company or as what I'm paying the well, guys to, to go do it. Seventy five to get there. I mean, that's yeah. what I tell my guys is, you know, anytime, and I use it as when they screw up, you know, which it happens. I mean, it happens anywhere. We go back for free. It is what it is. But right. If they miss something or there's a warranty claim, I always tell everybody it costs me five hundred dollars roll a truck. 
Yeah. And people don't realize that. Is that it's not, we're just running back there for free between the fuel and the payments and the yeah. insurance and the labor and everything else. I mean, I'm, I'm literally at $500 for me to go. And I'm not talking an hour away. I'm talking 15, just 20 like, minutes yeah, anyway. Away, yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, when I was in the fire department, we always, we, we broke it down. Um, or the city broke it down sure, at one point because yeah. you know it's government in general you don't generate um, a it revenue matter what for the services government right. Spends, we pay for it. <laughs> That's right. Fine. That's right. But like any time that truck would leave the station, um, you know, seven figures right yeah. between oh, yeah. the, the salaries and, and yeah. the equipment and the cost of the truck, yeah. it's it's seven figures. Um, and and a lot same thing for for here. It may not be seven figures, but it, it costs money. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between. One of the benefits that we have versus you is every right. time the trucks roll, I'm getting paid, right? Yeah. You know? Versus you, you're going out giving estimates and things like that. Yeah, and, and yeah I mean, I spend a ton on yeah. free estimates, you know, and uh, it, it's fine. I mean, some companies charge for estimates now, which I agree with to a certain extent, but it also blows my mind because I feel like people should have the right to get some numbers. And it's who they feel the most comfortable with. And that's, right. Perfect example, I was late today, full disclosure. I was late because <laughs> I was on an estimate. But, you know, yeah. it, I scheduled late it. Late here, not the job. Late, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I scheduled the estimate for one thirty. Yeah. You know, and I was there at one thirty. Yeah. Supposed to be here after that. <laughs> I don't know what time it was going to air, but we'll say it's after that. But I was 30 minutes late because that customer had a ton of questions. Right. You know, but it's my job to answer those questions and to make them feel comfortable and to let them understand that, I'm not trying to get one over on you. Right. Like, you know, I'm really not. Like, I mean, yes, we are more expensive than some people. We are far less expensive than others. But, you know, it's all about who do you feel the most comfortable with? And that's right. what I tell customers is that you've got to go with a company that you trust. It's right. not necessarily the lowest number. It's not the highest number because you think they're going to do a better job. They got to pay for the commercials. I mean, at the end of the day. Right. You know, 95% of our business is word of mouth. Yeah, it is a relationships that I've built through people like you or realtors or whoever is, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. I hope to make a profit. I don't always <laughs> make a profit. Yeah. Sometimes I take a loss, Yeah. but I'm going to do the right thing, you know? And when I quote a number, that's the number. I'm not going to come back with the, Oh, when we took this out, by the way, we found this and an extra three grand or whatever that number is. That, no, that's not fair to the customer. Yeah. You know, they, they were expecting a certain number. So it's tough because I'm with you. Fuel is expensive. Everything's expensive. Everything is expensive. Credit card fees, yeah. right? Everything. I mean, I've got customers that I gave prices to, and I looked the other day. Um, in the last two years, I have experienced 18 price increases. Do we still have a battery? Barely. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting booed on the side. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, we've had 18 price increases in the last year and a half to yeah. two years. Um, yeah. I'm giving people prices that are two, three grand more expensive than what they were two years ago. Yeah. I'm not making any more money on that. Yeah. That's just equipment, you know, and that's what's tough. And I'm sure for you is that, you know, I mean, what do you do? Like at some, yeah. at some point, you feel like you got to pass that on because you're paying a ton more. I'm paying more in insurance. I'm paying more in fuel. Yep. Paying more in employees. I'm paying more for every yeah. time I turn around. Yeah. Cell phones, septic, whatever. You know, um, you know, I'm paying more, but I'm trying not to pass that along. And we haven't had price increases for four years. You know. Yeah, and well, that that's that's the inspection industry. We haven't had you know as an industry, yeah. we haven't charged more in in twenty years. You know, yeah. and and. Yeah, it, like I said, you want to be reasonable. You want to help people who can't normally afford certain things because so you don't see them get ripped off. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you start, especially right now, um, you start really thinking about fuel surcharges. Um, um, well, uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I bought a house in the worst possible time. <laughs> Middle of COVID. Yeah. My wife decides she wants to move. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't matter what I think. We got to go, right? Yeah. So we sold our house. Great, whatever. Yeah. We moved. But, you know, we, to make our bid competitive, right. we couldn't have an inspection, right? right. Like, I, I couldn't require that as one of the options. But I insisted on an inspection. And it was before, you know, you and I had a relationship before you bought out Aaron. I knew Aaron. I trusted Aaron, Ricky, right. all those guys, Justin. Yeah. Justin, eh. 
Yeah, kidding, you know, kidding. Uh, you know. <laughs> Justin moments. That kind of beard makes you wonder. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, I I did an inspection for informational purposes only. Right. But I insisted on it because why are you going to spend that much money? Probably the most money you're ever going to spend on yeah. anything, short of us small business owners who might yeah. buy ten trucks in our lifetime, yeah. whatever. But I'm buying a house. This yeah. is by far the biggest investment I am ever making short yeah. of my business. Yeah. Why would I ever not get an inspection on it? it yeah. I work in crawl spaces and attics for a living. <laughs> I deal with construction for a living. Yep. I know a lot, right? But I don't know a lot about everything. Right. I know a little bit about everything, and I'm great at one thing, right. which is HVAC. I could tell you one of these didn't work, one of these had a leak. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I had gauges when I looked at it. Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. Um, you know, I could tell you that static was wrong in one of the how uh, one of the units, whatever. But I don't know enough about everything to truly inspect the house. Right. I demanded an inspection for informational purposes only. Right. So Aaron came out, did a great inspection. I did a radon because I truly believe in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I am radon certified. I don't do radon. Yeah. But I am right on certain. Yeah. You know, (laughs) like it was important for me just from an air quality perspective because in my industry, I need to know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah, I don't do radon tests every day. I don't want to. That's not what I do. You know, leave that to the guys that do radon. I mean, I can do remediation. I'm certified in both, but that's not what I do. Um, But I had a radon test added. You know, I did the full inspection. It was, you know, Whatever it was, I don't even know six, right. seven, eight hundred dollars, whatever that price was. But it's the most expensive thing I'm ever gonna buy. Right? It blows my mind. I'm on the hook for thirty <laughs> years for this thing. <laughs> Why would I not want to know where at least yeah. it stands day one? It you know, like right. it when you know. And I knew Ricky. You know, he's a mm-hmm. previous employee. Courtney took him over, and unfortunately, she's horrible at her job because she was very bad. <laughs> Ricky would never let that happen. But um. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to say something, but yeah, she, she doesn't know. So bad. She's too busy doing. She has no words because <laughs> she's a millennial and is worried about TikTok. I'm actually know. not a millennial. She's I'm a Gen, Gen yeah, Z. She's worse. Yep. Even worse. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I should go ahead and hand you my paycheck now. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, at the end of the day, why would you not want to know where you start out? And my thing is, you don't hire. And I know that probably from being a previous business owner or a current business owner, or whatever. But you don't hire the two hundred dollar an hour guy because he's there to get in, get out, and get his money. Point yeah. blank. Yeah. Same thing that the cheap age vac guys are doing. Yeah. They're in there to get their money, get in, get out. They don't care about after the fact. They don't offer warranties. They don't offer anything. It's just, yeah. hey, you paid two hundred bucks up front. Congratulations. You know, I'd rather pay eight hundred dollars and truly know that what I'm getting. And to be fully disclosure, I got like thirty grand in stuff. Right. It's hard for me not to cuss at this point. <laughs> Trying to be YouTube compliant. I mean, it's not. <laughs> Jesus. The video's gone. Well, thank God, because 30 grand in shit I needed to fix. But, you know, I mean, like, I was looking, and Aaron's like, oh, it's not that bad. Like, it's not that. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, 30 grand is a lot of freaking money, Jack. Like, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, but. You know, at the same time, there's a lot of stupid stuff, too, right? You know, Absolutely. like this GSI, yeah, I didn't work, right, right, right. Allo work, whatever. Either way, it gave me a hell of a honeydew list. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, Sid. I blame you. You bought it. It's your fault. <laughs> but, you know, like, I mean, you know, every weekend, my wife's like, where'd you make it on this list? Like, yeah. I didn't make it anywhere because it's the first day off in 12 freaking days. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I wanted to know where I started from. Because it's important. Right. It really it is. is. It is, man. And, and there's, there's, I've seen, I'm sure, I, well, maybe you don't, I don't know, maybe you don't care that much, but I, I, every now and then I'll check like other inspection companies, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And mostly for pricing, just see right. if we're still competitive, see if they've gone up, we need sure. to go up, all that stuff. Yeah. But also to see, especially in this market, to see where they are, because if they have an online scheduler, to see, yeah. you know, where they are as far as being booked out and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, to see if we're we're below that, above that, or right on yeah. on par, because the market is just so crazy, we right. just don't know, right? Sure. Um, no, and, and and I stumbled upon this company that that does five inspections a day. Not like I have five openings, and if you schedule one, that blocks out three. No, like, and they advertise that they do an hour and a quarter 
per inspection is how uh, long it should take. I bet that works out. And, and we average two per inspector, right? That's impressive. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, that's man. a morning and an afternoon. And during the summer months, during when the days get really long, we can do three um, if the inspector sure. wants, wants to work into yeah. the evening. And I did that, you know, I was by myself, yeah. um, just to accommodate people. But man, it's a long day, and and if you're doing it right, so right. I don't, I don't, man, I just don't see how you can do, you know, three, four, five on There's a regular no basis, way possible. and be able to provide the level of information that you want, let alone need for the largest purchase you're ever yeah. going to make, right? Well, and before I came on and did your training, like you know, that's how we met initially. I did right. training for you guys and. I asked Ricky, who was a friend of mine mm-hmm. previously, who worked for Aaron, who you know you inherited. I'm sorry, Ricky. If you're I, I call I call I call whatever. Aaron on a regular basis and tell him that uh, he sold me a lemon. That's right, absolutely, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But <laughs> I called Ricky and asked for one of your inspection reports because mm-hmm. that's what's important to me. Right, it's not about all right. This company bought them, great. You know, yeah, they're phenomenal, great. You're paid by that guy now. I don't believe a damn thing you say, right? So, yeah. you know, he sent me an inspection report, and it was a different inspection report, but I wanted to look at it. And that was before I even did the training. I was, I need to see a copy of an inspection report. I right. don't care who did it. I don't care if it's Sid, if it's Aaron, if it's you know mm-hmm. Justin, if it's Joe Blow off the street. I want to see an inspection report, right? Because it shows the level of detail that you yeah. guys do. And I know how long Aaron was at the house that I bought. Mm-hmm. And it, granted, it was a different situation because it was in BFE. Because <laughs> I refuse. We're not on YouTube, right? I, I mean, refuse. we will be, but <laughs> we can believe it out. I refuse to buy a house that I can't pee off the back deck of and get arrested from. Right, right. So I had to be <laughs> I didn't know right, that was so, a requirement. Yeah, no, that's a requirement. Literally, that that's definitely a requirement. <laughs> don't care how many bedrooms it's got. I don't yeah. care what the kitchen looks like. I don't care how small it is. I cannot pee off the back there and get arrested. <laughs> rule number one. All right, so that was my rule. Only rule I had. Moved to BFE to get that rule. But anyway, <laughs> it's fine. But Aaron was out there. I mean, to your point, he was out there for, I mean, I joined the inspection because, you know, yeah. I'm that guy. Yeah. I did the HVAC inspection while I was out there. Aaron made fun of me for it because he was like, this is what I see. And I'm like, you're wrong. You know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> 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 Let me show you how this is really done. That's right. um, but, you know, and I did the inspection report. But Aaron was out there even bypassing the HVAC. I mean, he didn't even – he looked at the HVAC to make sure it was there. Right. You know, and then I did the rest of it and just sent it to him like, yeah. this is what I see. It doesn't matter for inspection, you know, information, information only. only. Yeah. yeah. I would never do that if it was, you know, for you guys, as far as, you know, you got to report what you see and then I'll, I know what I know on the back end. Right. But, you know, I'm not that guy. I'm not that big of a dick. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I did my own inspection. I just sent him what I saw just to add to the report so that he saw it. And he even put, I think, you know, some BS disclaimer, probably like y'all do, like see they're eating an air disclaimer. That's right. Around, That's like, right. Well, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, he was there probably six, seven hours. And it's yeah. not like it's a mansion. Like, don't get me wrong. I am not moving <laughs> to mansions. Man, um, I should have went to heating air business. I know, right? Like, <laughs> holy cow, that's where you make all the money. No, it was just, you know, I mean, he, like, he, all right, let's play this point. He went to the attic. Uh-huh. It was the middle of July. <laughs> I have a unit in the attic. I told him to take pictures. I did not go to the attic. Yeah. First time I was in the attic was last Thursday. <laughs> Point blank, being honest, it is what it is. This all explains why you yeah. sold the business. Pretty <laughs> much, right? You know, like, I mean, but he gave me a report that was so detailed. Like, and I was in the crawl space with yeah. him. And I was crawling the crawl space because that's nothing new for me. I don't care. Right. I, I was would in the never. crawl space for a day on an hour, you know, and Aaron's like four foot three. Like, I mean, you know, I can say that because he's not on here, but he's like a leprechaun. Like, <laughs> I mean, he didn't have to bend over to walk most of the spots, you know, like, I'm crawling, like, you know, I'm belly crawling in these spots. And Aaron's, like, walking up, like, laughing, you know, and it's fine. It's fine. (laughs) But, you know, um, you know, I mean, he literally, I mean, you know, and you guys are the same way. I've been on inspections with you guys. And, like, you know, I'm. I make fun of some of your guys because they're older. Well, maybe, cough, yeah. cough, Gordon. Yeah, <laughs> brings a stool with him. Gordon, uh, <laughs> I will stand at the crawl space Life door. Alert. That's going to be an issue at yeah. the next uh, team meeting, probably. Yeah. 
<laughs> people shout back things that are going on, you know, and I'm like, that sounds great. Um, cause again, he can walk back there. No problem. Um, doesn't have to crawl at all. Knees are phenomenal. You know, knees uh, of a 20 year old. That's right. Um, but in all honesty, you know, I mean, and that's how it goes is that, you know, you get what you pay for. You honestly do. And consumers don't see that. They're worried about the Walmart pricing of the world. Low they price do. guarantee. They, you know, low price that's, guarantee. That's a fact, man. They, they, people want, you know, they, like I said, they say reasonable pricing, but what that means is cheap as possible, yeah. you know, without truly understanding what goes into this. Cause again, you, you, you're not paying for, um, you know, I mean, we go out there, we can be there, you can be there, we can be there, you know, yeah. plumber can be there for 20 minutes, you yeah. know, um, you're, you're not, pl- you're not paying for what, 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 how long we're there. Yeah. You're, you're paying for the knowledge, Absolutely. the experience, the technology and the equipment yeah. that we bring. Um, and that, this is where like, we always get asked, you know, what do you charge a different rate for new construction versus old construction? Sure. Well, you know, some, some, some companies do, right. They, yeah. they, you know, after X amount of years or whatnot, they, they, you know, about the end of the day, no, uh, you know we we do a flat new rate. Construction is horrible <laughs> because okay, exactly because flat out. Um, you know we did a new construction a couple weeks. Ago. I did one a couple weeks ago, and and we wrote up over forty things in that house. You know, I it. and and the county failed um, the detached garage because it was unstru- it was structurally unsound. Yeah, uh, I believe it. And, and they put the driveway. This this Ryan was Holmes. Uh, Sorry, uh, can't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> but it was a close, close relative. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, uh, but but they they put the driveway in the wrong property, so they get an easement for the driveway. Um, so so no, you, you're not paying for for the age of the house. Yeah. You're paying for what we bring to to the inspection. And Absolutely. in your case, you're bringing you're, you're paying for the knowledge and the experience to come because you can pay yeah, that. Totally. Yeah, I mean, you can. People you know, don't calculate that into and you guys as well. I mean, you use infrared guns, you use flare cameras, you use everything else. And guys, I'm here to tell you, that stuff ain't cheap. It's not. You know, I mean, it's, it's not. not at all. And not and just the, the equipment itself, but understanding yeah. how to use and it. Because can buy it, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. But, but I've On seen Amazon, time, yeah. five grand. Hey, time, I got time one. and time again, yeah. I've seen like, hey, you know, in these inspection groups and whatnot, I'm yeah. sure you've seen the same thing. Like, hey, you know, this is what I found, you know, and, and a breaker that's that's showing 80 degrees. Sure. Like, well, yeah, th- that, that's okay, yeah. right? Like, do you know what you're looking at? Yeah. You know, do you understand that? Hey, you so. your heat strips wrong. That thing would be 115 degrees. <laughs> right? But, you know, I mean, yeah, you're right. And people don't get that. Is that they, they look at it and they're, oh, you should just have that. Well, yeah. how do you think that comes? <laughs> you know, it, it ain't from $200 inspections. I right. can promise you that. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And we fight the same battle. Is that, you know, when I when I send an install crew out, my goal isn't to have you heating and air at the end of the day. That's a no-brainer. Right. Right. And I'm sure with you, it's not the goal to have an inspection at the end of the day. Right. It's for that 40 page inspection report. Right. For me, it's you get your heating and air system and it's working to optimal efficiency. Yeah. It's installed right. You know, it's been pulled to a vacuum. It's going to last you the time that it should last you. You know, I mean, I don't want your system going out in 10 years. Yeah. That's the manufacturer warranty. 10 year parts on the system. Yeah. You know, if you're calling me at 10 years, we did something wrong. Right. Yeah, it's not working the way it should work. The strain on something, right. you know, um, and that's the biggest issue is that people don't people don't get that. They don't get that at all. They don't. Um, and I understand it. I mean, everybody's out for the deal. It's the American way. We are a debt heavy yeah. society where everybody pays the minimum <laughs> for everything they buy, yeah. and it is what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you shop around to five different HVAC companies or inspection companies, you go with the cheapest one because obviously they're offering the same thing for the same price. Right. No, they're not. There's no way they are. Yeah. 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 It's uh man, like I said, that that's that's one of the things that's just it, it it's frustrating from mm-hmm. from an from a business owner, it's frustrating from just where we are as economically, you know, because again, you're you're looking at uh, everything is rising, right? Yeah. And, uh, and horribly, horribly. right, I mean. and not just from equipment, but yeah. we and and inflation, but employee wages, right? Oh, yeah. It's all it's all rising, but we still expect. Um, well, wh- 
what can you do for me? Right. Yeah. Well, which part don't you want me to inspect today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm sympathetic or empathetic, however you want to put it to people who, who are on budgets. And that's why we right. price the way we price so we can yeah. still get them in, you know, cause again, I'd hate for somebody to buy a, a, a house and, and go for the cheapest option possible and then turn out to find, to find out that they owe $30,000 in, in crawl space work because they, they went to cheap route, you know. Um, but, but there's got to be, we've got to be able to open the doors on, on, on this case because this is, this is filmed or recorded before uh, Memorial <laughs> Day weekend. Um, but we got to be able to open up doors on Tuesday um, versus, versus, you know, like, Hey, you know, we, we, we went out of business because we, we didn't compensate for the fact that fuel has gone up $2 and some change a gallon over the last couple months. You know, and that's the thing is it, I mean, and we, you know, and I'm sure you guys do the same and I mean, you guys do a phenomenal job, which I did yell at Aaron once on pricing, but you guys do a phenomenal job on giving, you know, estimated costs. Yeah. Right. Like. This is around about what you expect. No guarantee. It is what it is. But, you know, this yeah. is kind of what you expect to pay. And as an HVAC guy, that's my the bane of my existence. Like, I hate getting an inspection report. I actually yelled at you once. About, <laughs> is it, you know, like, don't quote the customer. You know, you should expect this to this because... I don't know, day man. To day. You know, and that's and that's for for anybody listening outside the Richmond area. That's that's a Richmond yeah. um, thing. Is that and the way that it's written, from my understanding, because I'm not a realtor. My wife right. is, but I'm not, and and I don't pay much attention to what she says, as she will tell you. Sure. Um, sure. That sure. that the the way I understand it's written is that the Richmond contract is that it falls on the buyer to provide cost estimates, right. and over the years that somehow has fallen to the home inspector sure. to providers that cost right. estimates because we I actually had a conversation with realtors saying, Hey, look, I had a client. Um, she, she ended up paying, you know, got estimates for these issues. Yeah. Um, there was a lot more. And, and when she pulled up the report, cause I didn't do the report, but yeah. um, somebody else did on, on the, in the company. And she said, we just wasn't expecting that price because we didn't think those issues were, yeah. were, well, when she pulled up the report, Every issue that was that, that she said that was called out by the contractor was in the report. Right. Like we, we identified all the issues. Yeah. But what we fell short of was the cost estimates. Well, we don't do the work. Yeah. We just find the problems. Yeah. The problem we're facing as contractors is that like I just got a notification today about June one increases. Everything's increasing June one. <laughs> It is February 27th at the time of this recording. I don't know what time you're going to see it. But, you know, <laughs> I've got three days. May 27th. Yeah, yeah, he may, have had, whatever. He may have had too many. Whatever it is. Did he February? He did. Maybe. <laughs> I, like, I just checked my watch. I was like, wait a minute. That's not right. Whatever. You're not paying attention. You're YouTubing. <laughs> um, Responding to May 27th. <laughs> but either way, I've got three days. You know, so yeah. there's no way possible. You guys can give accurate no. price, you know, and it's it's impossible for me at this point to give accurate price. I mean, I mean honestly, like, I, had, you know. I had a client where she told me she had somebody, she had an HVAC and a plumber and uh -huh. everybody else coming out the next day. She's like, so how accurate, because she asked me, because it was outside of Richmond area, and she asked me for cost estimates. So I was like, <laughs> whatever, we do it all the time anyway. Yeah. So, why not? She, so she called me, she said, how accurate are these estimates? Like, I don't know. She's like, what do you mean you don't know? I was like, I don't do the work. And I said, not only do we not do the work, but I don't keep up with the inflation yeah. of what it is that you need. Yeah. So, so I don't, maybe they're accurate, but again, you know, you have somebody coming out and that sure. it's in our reports, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, hey, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever, but not that anybody reads our reports. Not at all. But it's <laughs> in the number. <laughs> That's right. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, these are just a courtesy and, and always right. get your own quotes because again, you know, we, and, and, and the, as we've talked about the price varies so much depending on who you call. So, you know, well, and the perfect example is I, I quoted a job I was working on it yesterday. You know, it's a good example is it was a large commercial job. So everything's line item. Like, I mean, it's very to the T. Like it's right. not one of those you're just flubbing numbers, you're hoping for the best, whatever. Like everything is accounted for. And I quoted a number December, December 19th. Can you hear that? A little bit. Oh. <laughs> we got somebody vacuuming outside oh. the office, but that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. Got to keep the place clean. <laughs> um, 
a quote of December 19th, and they finally got approval for the job. Yeah. Today, like, well, yesterday. So I requoted the job, and prices have gone up on equipment and materials. An average, now it's just an average, across everything, 55% in five months. Yeah. Five months, 55%. Wow. And we just got told about a June increase. <laughs> June 1. So, you know, I mean, it's it's impossible. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it is. You know, I, I used to be able to guarantee. We used to get one price increase a year. Yeah. Every February, we got a price increase. It averaged 3 to 5%. Just being full disclosure. I don't care. 3 to 5% <laughs> on equipment and materials. Yeah. All right. Now, we're getting a price increase every month. Yeah. Of 8 to 10%. Crazy. Every month. Every month. So my quotes went from valid until <laughs> to 30 days. Hope to God I didn't quote you on 30th. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it is. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Be guaranteed for the next three minutes. Yeah. Three I months. mean, literally, that's what it's turned into. And so, you know, and everybody's the same. I mean, I was talking to the electrician I work with every day. You yeah. know, I, I, I've grown a trusted group of guys that I work with right. that, you know, do good work. They, you know, are very fair, right. they might, you know, again, not necessarily the cheapest in the world, but not the most expensive, very right. fair, do good work, will stand behind what they do. And I was talking to an electrician the other day, and he was like, man, my price on, you know, this particular wire went up 38% yeah. in a day. And the problem with that is right now um, is that you lose money. Yeah. You know, because you're quoting stuff and yeah, it's do. changing so fast. Yeah, you do. And and at the end of the day, you're losing money, right? Yeah. Because you're, you're you're quoting people. You're telling them it's valid until this, even if yeah. it's just a week. Yeah. Even if it's just you know, it's it's, it's yeah, happening so fast that you're 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 just losing money over it. You know, so yeah, it happens. It, it does. And, you know, that's just again part of the of, of the doing business. Yeah. Welcome to being a small business owner. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me start my own business. They said. Yeah. Why not? It's fun. <laughs> You make a ton of money. That's right. That's right. Live it's a lie. <laughs> well, man, we've been going for um, 15, 16 minutes over than what we have planned to. Um, Welcome to my life. Right? <laughs> but um, I don't want to. She's ready to go. <laughs> she is. She's got places ready. to go. Hot pot. She's got to go to Virginia Beach for whatever nonsense. Hot We're going to run for another hour. Hot yeah. pot. Friday, Friday on Memorial Weekend, she's trying to go right. to Virginia Beach just for dinner. Not not for like a night out, just for dinner. Yeah, um, I didn't really plan that out. I didn't but your family it. just called and they said you need to be home tomorrow. That's right. No, nope, gotcha. it's too late. So, oh, no. um, but I appreciate you coming in, man. I really enjoyed this. This being the first after hours um, podcast again. Sorry to be a degenerate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a hot mess, but it's okay. Yeah, that's that's a Courtney problem, not a us problem. Yep. Yeah, I'll turn you guys it, into Muppets halfway through. Editing okay. is going to be fun. <laughs> it is, it is. But um, if anybody wants to reach you, how do they get a hold of you? They go to my website, mm-hmm. c3rva.com, then call the number, 804-303-5900. Um, those are the best ways to reach me. I've given my cell phone number, but we all know yeah, I'm in the field. He doesn't, he doesn't respond. I don't respond right text. away. I will be honest. Yeah, um, if you call yeah. him, he'll send you a text, and I'll call you later. Yeah. He never does. No. Nope. You'll get your heart I broken. Yeah. I am out in the field as well. <laughs> um, I'd love to pretend like I'm big enough to where I sit in the office all day. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, website, you know, primary phone number, uh, office manager will take care of you. We got after hours, whatever. But yeah. Yeah. And for the, we, we didn't dive into it because we went down that rabbit hole, which is um, um, part of the, uh, the drink that was sponsored yeah. by rabbit hole whiskey. But one of the things that Brian and or his company does is they do commercial. Um, yep. And he also does boilers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't really dive into that, but boilers is, is, is a dying. Um, um, system yeah. uh, here in the Richmond area because a lot of people move to heat pumps, but um, commercial and and uh, boilers are both uh, on his resume. Oil you know, and gas, yeah, oil and gas um, things that are hard to find because not every company does those things. Yeah. Um, like we talked about before, you know, the last mm-hmm. commercial that the realtor was having a hard time with somebody finding uh, a yeah. company that does commercial. So um, 
So yeah, those are the ways you can you can get a hold of him, get find him. But like I said, he does the outside just the conventional heat pumps that we that we normally see. So if you have a boiler system, conversional system, things like that, he can help you out as well. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming on, man. This was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll yeah. see how the editing goes. It's um, gonna be horrible. Uh, it like I is. said, y'all are going to be turned into Muppets halfway yeah. through. I'm well, excited. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't think we were slurring, but we'll we'll see how the final product is. <laughs> but who knows? We'll, we'll definitely do this Welcome again. Welcome to After Hours. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it, man. Yeah.